Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch black canvas. Turned out fantastic. These giant mountains, huge moon, big old foreground tree, cabin, trees, texture, snow, softness, reflections, all sorts of stuff. It's fantastic. You're obviously excited about watching this. That's why you clicked on the link, right? So check the description down below. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're going to do it just like this. My goodness, how did you get here? I was just putting on the last of our liquid clear. Man, you snuck up on me like that. How dare you? All right, so we're going to put on the last of our clear or linseed oil. Whatever you have, it's going to work just fine. I used olive oil one time when I very first started. I used olive oil. That's, that is 100% accurate. You can take it to the bank. Take it to the bank. All right, you can see, very nice, very, uh, very much uniform, the same color, about the same thickness, and it is wet to the touch. Now, if, you never, if you've never seen how we clean the brushes, we have a nasty old kind of beater bucket, I call it, just from Lowe's. You can use one from Home Depot, doesn't matter. And it's got a golf ball basket down in the bottom of it. That's what I had in my garage when I first started painting. And that's what we ended up using. We've been using it for three years now. The same dirty old nasty golf ball basket that I wasn't using to begin with. Now let's load up some color onto our canvas, okay? We're gonna come up here with our blue. Really pull it down, kind of bounce our brush in just like this. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Well, you guys go like, this. what is he doing? And then we're gonna come up and just decide, who knows, maybe we'll have the blue over here. It sure is now, right? And you might not be able to see it. Even when you're doing it by yourself, you might not be able to see it. That's what they call a transparent color, right? We can, it doesn't, it doesn't try to cover all of that black. It remains very much a dark bit of color. Okay, we're gonna come in, we're gonna drop down a little bit now. And who knows, let's put some down in this bottom corner over here. And just dump it on. All we're trying to do is just cover up some space. Cover up some area with some color. And then when we come across with our, with our white, it's gonna show through in different places. And you can do the whole canvas in one color if you wanted to, or if you want some places to kind of shine differently, then you use the color in that area and you kind of rotate the colors and then once you paint across it, you'll see it all change. It's really cool. And wherever we're not going to stick any blue is where we're going to put the phthalo green, which is coming up next. Coming up next. So if you want to scroll forward a couple seconds, you can. Let's see. Put it in there and then we're just really going to blend it out. Maybe the whole bottom will turn blue. There we go. Put the whole bottom in blue. A little bit of our sky over here that we're missing. Just really scrubbing it on because this is going to become our, our sort of our base coat with our with our liquid clear. Get it up in there. Now I'm going to switch brushes real quick so we don't have to wash them right now. And we'll go back into the phthalo green. Get a good amount of that up on the brush. And just you, you might be able to see this one a little bit more than you would the phthalo blue. But it's still going to be a very dark looking color on your canvas. And wherever we don't have that phthalo blue, we're going to put that phthalo green. And they can kind of overlap in certain places if you want them to. Kind of chuck them in certain areas. Maybe there's some up there. Shoot, maybe there's a whole green patch right in the middle of all these things. So it's just all these different colors. All across the canvas. Take it back and forth just like this, just so there's not any big thick areas. And we'll be ready to go. Now we're going to wash these brushes and we'll be right back. Now, once we come up, I usually always dab them on a paper towel because they look dry, the, the color's nice and off of them, and they look clean. But a lot of times there's a lot of moisture left inside there. So if you just hit them on the edge of your table a couple times with your paper towel, you'll be all set to go. Get those nice and dry, and then we'll decide what we're gonna do. Let's get our old cake pan out. The old eight inch by two inch cake pan, eight inch, two inch right here. We were using it for a thing and then we kind of, I kind of stole it from London. Maybe we could do one just in the top. We could do one over here. If you don't have an eight inch cake pan, you can always use a, a solo cup. It'll be a little bit smaller, of course, but it's the same kind of thing. You just trace around it. Something you can get dirty and throw away. Even though I've had that solo cup for a really long time. Now let's come in here. We're going to pull down some white. Just like that, get a decent amount. And then we gotta make a, a line around our moon, okay? So we need our brush to be nice and knife-like. 
So bring down a fair enough amount where you can get it to be like a, like a hatchet blade. Can't ever make it so super sharp, but let's see. What if we did it over here? And I want to accentuate the different colors, so we're going to put it up real high, right up there. Take our, our brush, not push too hard, just to give us an outline of where it is. You kind of want to uniformly press as you're going, turn your brush, and then by the time you get done, you have this little moon. And we're not worried about the bottom over here because it's going to be covered by a giant mountain. A little sneak peek, right? I've already, you guys have already seen what it looks like. I'm literally about to paint it right now. We're gonna paint it. We're gonna go crazy. We gotta, you know, we're gonna do, we're gonna do something, and we're gonna make it happen. Okay. So now, where do we want all of our light coming from? Is the question in this one, right? I mean, it's gonna be coming from the moon. So if our bright side's here, all of our highlights can be there, and our shadows can be on this side. Sounds good to me. A little bit more white on the brush, and then we're gonna come in, just kind of grab the edge, stay as close to the edge as you can get, right? We don't wanna come outside the line. Anything inside is good, outside is bad. See how I'm pushing up like this with this hand? I'm pushing as we rotate, right? I'm not moving this hand. I'm just pushing on this one, and we're rotating around, okay? We can get close, we can grab it, kind of pull down and across, right? We're making this exaggerated motion. That's gonna make it look round. As it, look at all these different colors as it comes across too. Beautiful. Okay, the top is a little tricky. Why don't we turn our brush, just get the, just get the color to line up with that top bit of line. And we don't wanna go all the way to the side, of course, we gotta have some shadowing in our moon. Can't all be white and pretty. Gotta have a dark side, right? Even the Jedi's had to battle the dark side. Again, just rotating my hand, look. We could whip it around the whole thing and continue on if you really wanted to. And that'll make it an easier way to make a circle, right? I love that. Look at all these different colors, guys. That's not from me adding anything to the brush. That's the colors that we put down initially. We're able to show you. Again, the bottom doesn't matter. We'll cover it over with the moon. So let's really fill this part in. Really fill it in, right? Again, with the downward swipes like that. That's what's gonna make it look round. Can't just go straight across. It's gotta be that downward swipe. We're kinda grabbing it, we're coming around the edge of the planet, grabbing it up here, whipping it down, whipping it down. Kinda blending it in as it comes across, right? Look at all these beautiful colors. Fantastic. That's why we put those things down initially. Get all those beautiful colors. And look, even if you wanted to finish off the bottom, just like that, you got a fresh, fresh little bit of moon. So if you wanted to have a full moon in yours, this is how you would do it. Just to show you. I don't like to leave much out around here. Looks like we came out of the line right there. So that's where our mountain's gonna go, that little pop out. So we'll focus on this bit up here, just kind of pull it across, nice and easy. Not gonna do the whole thing though. Don't need it all. All right. Now let's take it, make it nice and soft. We're gonna take our big brush, kind of pull it to the edge. Again with that rounded feel. See how it's making everything much softer. It's getting rid of all of those little brush lines that the fan brush left for us. Making it nice and soft and kind of uniformly one color. Looks really cool. Really neat. Now let's come over here with our black, kind of mix that in with our crimson, just right in the front. It's always funny, people are like, oh, I don't I don't want my colors to mix, right? Well, I do, I love having my colors mix. Let's see, pop in a little dark area for a crater over there, maybe there's a little guy. Let's be, just be random, right? Now we've got tons of little craters that we can make and turn into cool little different things. It's gonna be fun. Gonna be fun. Don't wanna do too many though. Now I'm gonna take a clean fan brush, right? Just gonna pull it out in every direction. Like if you think about like a face of a clock, look at that already, right? We're just gonna pull up a little bit, out to the side, down, over to the side, down. Let's go the other way, up this way, over that way, bam. 
different little things up to the side up to the side, up, over to the side, down, around, and poof, we got this cool little bit of crater in our pile. Let's turn this into one giant one, right? We kind of pull it over, pull it up just a little. You don't want it to grow too much. And depending on how much paint was on your brush, it could grow very large, very fast. So we're just making little swipes out. And that way it'll give some little form of shadowy detail that we can accentuate, right? That looks like a cool one right there. That looks cool, guys. It looks very cool. You can take all these and you can even blend them all slightly so you get that kind of foggy look to it, but I don't know. I like it. I like the way it looks right there. Let's see. We're going to come over into our paint thinner, which we use low odor mineral spirits. Same thing. It's just less stinky, right? We're going to make this nice little pile like this. I can't tip it too much, otherwise it'll all run away. And from here, we're going to make these cool little, you know, bits. Everywhere there was a, a little poke, we'll have this little crack coming off. All these cool little different angles and different little things. And, you know, some of them don't even have to connect like that. Maybe it's just a crack. It just runs along the bit of the planet. Kind of neat, kind of neat. In our darkest areas, we'll go away from where there's like little points. Just like little tree branches almost. Just don't want them to grow too long, right? Or be too much, too, too uniform. If they all look the same, it's not going to look real. Let's do a couple more. These little guys over here, they just had little teeny guys. Little things coming off of them here and there, there and here. And you know, if you make them all straight lines, it's going to look kind of funny. So throw a little wiggle in there. Get these cool little things happening. Let's wipe that off the brush into the paint thinner, onto the paper towel, because we can't really beat the devil out of a liner brush, right? I wish we could just beat the devil out of that thing. But we can't, we can't. Boom. Just like that. And I like taking a step back and looking. That's why we look over at the screen over here, so we can see little things that didn't quite connect or something. I'm, I, at the angle that I'm at, it's too close. It's too close. There's too much glare from the light, so I like being able to look back and see, which is the equivalent of you guys going like this. Now, let's see if we can't just blend this a little bit more. All right, we we'll still have this darker side, this darker edge. Yeah, now it's just a little bit softer. That's all I want it to be. It's a little softer. Just go to that soft, dark side like that. Very cool. Very, very cool. Just very, very light strokes is all we're doing. Using like a couple hairs of the brush, not wanting to really brighten it up. Just get a little bit of color behind it. So it's not straight up black. See, as long as it's not the same, the same bit of color as the, the whole rest of it, and then we'll be good. And if it ends up being too much the same color, then you just go and make it all the same color. And it can be a very bright full moon with no shadow. Right, perfectly fine. That looks great. That looks great. There we go. Bam. Gotta get as close to the edge as possible, right? All right, let's scrape up all the mess we made over here. And put it right down there in the center. We're gonna grab our black, our crimson, our blue, just mix them all up, even with that thalo green that we had before. Scoop it all up. Mix it all up. You're like, Josh, why is your palette so dirty? Yeah, this is why. Because I make a giant mess. That's what we like to do. Make a mess, right? I have a space for me to wipe off some paint over here. All right, now we're going to take a little bit of white. And we're going to mix that up into the fair section of our, our mountain paint. And that way, when we pull it out against this with our brush, it's we're going to be able to see it. If it's, very, if it's too dark, you're not going to be able to see it. So we're going to come in. Still very dark color, just not as dark as the original mixture. And why not? There's like this giant bit of mountain that comes in across our moon, stays very dark, very crisp lines across the moon. You can't have it be, you know, nice and anything. It's got to be very crisp. Can't be soft. It's got to stand out. Throw little peaks out, little different things that are happening inside the mountain. You can take it up there and just let it grow on its own. 
on its own. Put a little bit of stuff down in here, scrape that up, put it down. That's all we really got to do is put a little bit of color in there to allow the mountain to kind of grow. Don't want to have it, it too thick in some places. And in other places, we have to cover parts of the moon. Look at that, how it just pushes that moon right back a million miles out of the sky. If we cover over bits, like it just pushes it right back at this really bright moonrise happening. <clears throat> now we'll come with our one inch brush and just start to pull this out in different directions. Watch, we come over here and then maybe come down, right? Creating this little ridge. And then maybe we pull this guy out. He comes down over here in all this space, but the more that we pull on it, the more it's gonna wanna grow. This guy up here. All right, cut them across like that. Now these guys back here, which you think are back there, can cut right in front of this guy and push. You get this whole little flat edge of a rock right here, which is gonna look really cool in my mind. Kind of pull that down, pull our mountain off the side, make sure we're covering everything. It's nice and dark. Just push everything back like that. Don't even have to come very far down here. Really don't. You can't really see much of it anyway, right? Can't really see much. Now we have to decide how we want to highlight it. So let's make it nice and bright and white. Grab a little bit of blue, right? That's actually a lot of blue, but we need a lot because we're going to make up a fair amount of shadow. We're going to mix all that up with the white. Scrape her up, put it down. We're going to grab the little smidgenest of black or that little mountain mixture. And all that's going to do is dull it a little bit, right? Still this kind of bluish color, but it's not as bright. Now we're gonna wipe off our knife in a fresh, clean surface. All right, we're gonna take a bit of white, scrape up a bit of that blue, and come over here. Now we'll have this off-white, bluish color, but against the other blue of itself, right here, it's a much brighter bit of blue, so it's gonna look white further away. I don't like using the whites. You know, you can't use white with, you know, can't have an all-white moon with an all-white mountain, an all-white foreground, it doesn't work. It's a start with a different color, work your way brighter and darker at the same time. All right, let's grab up some of that shadow color and maybe an arm bar mountain. It's over, you know, somewhere. We'll turn the knife upside down. We'll bring it over here. And all these cool little things happening. All right, pulling it down. Just letting it break off the knife nice and easy. Don't need a whole huge amount of paint. And we get these things start to happen in our mountain. That's all shadows, right? Now, maybe there's a little bit of a shadow over there. Maybe some off to the side, a little bit over here. We can always cover it with the white if we don't like it. That's the best part. Now, a little half on this. Maybe this guy will connect in. Maybe the shadows will connect and we'll only see a little bit of white back there. Now, or we'll come back, dump in a bit over here, kind of accentuate that this guy falls in front of the other mountain back here. It all depends on how we highlight it, right? And when we come up with our highlight paint, it's gonna look so white compared to that paint, right? You can even take a little bit more blue and put it in there. Now we're gonna come back, scrape this up right here. So we have all these different colors and we'll come up and maybe decide our bit of mountain. Maybe it lives off like this, just kind of rolling the knife down, letting it bounce, letting it grab wherever it wants, very lightly, very lightly, leaving space in between out on the edge, it's gotta be bright out on the edge, right? And depending on how we pull our knife is what the mountain's gonna look like. Grab up a little bit more. Maybe there's a little flatter area back here, right? So we work that and come to the side, you can pull it down, you got a little cliff right there. Starts to fall down the side of the mountain. It's like you're skiing down back and forth. With that big old bright moon, maybe there's a little peak back here. Hmm, who knows, maybe up here. A little bit that got hit by this by the light, right? Not all of it's gonna show. So we gotta cut it off at some point. Maybe get a little bit over there, just like that, coming down. Maybe that guy falls down. And the front of this side gets lit up just from how the light was, right? That looks really cool. Now, what if we took a little bit of that shadowy blue color and see if we could like, just hang like a bit off the edge of that guy. Just like that. It almost looks too bright though, so we have to 
throw a little bit of that dark shadow in with it. Maybe we can accentuate that they're falling off. No, it just doesn't look right. So we'll take that, pull it all down in that same direction that our other little bit was. And now we have this cool little ice cliff almost that's hanging back there. Totally accidental, right? We didn't expect that to happen. Look at how that phthalo green showed inside there too. That looks neat. That looks neat. Right, you can take and brighten areas up if you want. But depending on how you pull your knife is what your mountain is gonna look like. Okay, so you gotta decide what you want it to look like. I'm gonna have a little bit brighter shadows over there. You can add that. You can do all sorts of things. You wanna have a little bit darker shadows? Come in with our dark color and really accentuate the dark areas. Maybe there's a dark bit in, right in between those two areas where it gets really dark. Can't even really tell what's happening back inside that crevice. Right? It's so bleeding dark back there. Now let's come over to the other side. We'll grab these up over here. Maybe we got a little, little slide that comes out. A little over there, a little over there. A little piece, a little here and there. Where is the moon hitting? Well, seems like it's hitting right there. And we can slide down and just make a mess into this canvas. That's all we're really doing is making a giant mess. Right? The more we play with it though, the more those cool little breaks are gonna go away. So try to nail it on that one go and then leave it or don't touch that area again. You know what I mean? You can always come up to it and add to it and change it different ways. Look at just that slight difference of color right there. Just that shadow. Oh man, so, so nice. <clears throat> so nice. There we go. Just kind of filling it in, but we're leaving those real dark areas too. You gotta to have those gaps. Got to. And your mountains can grow down forever, so be careful how far they go, right? Gotta be careful. A little bit of something up there. Which just gives me the idea to do like the softest little fluffing of snow or something fluffing up off the top of that. See, it's almost too strange. Almost too strange. So take a little bit of that dark color. We'll go back in and we'll just shape it back to how we had it. Kind of getting rid of that little dark area back there. And then we'll go hide it with some stars or something. But you can always go back, right? You don't always have to go forward. See if we can't add a little bit of that dark back here too. Just in case anybody's really looking for some dark spots, they're back there. They are back there. Let's see. All right, the more and more you go over that kind of lighter blue with the darker blue and the darker you know, color underneath, the more it'll mix together so you can kind of blend it how you want it. I love this little, it's like an ice fall back here. It's really cool. Just accentuate that a little bit, man. And what's cool is you wanna start seeing that white everywhere, but you can't. You're never gonna see all of the, the prettiest bright white, right? So you gotta, you gotta uh, be gentle with it. Be gentle with the white. You gotta have more shadows and highlights in a night scene like this. Now, why don't we come in with a little bit of liquid white into that kind of bluish color, just so it's much lighter. And we'll come in, just pop in a few little stars here and there, there and here. You can make constellations if you want. You can do all sorts of different things. Like say, why don't we do the Big Dipper in this one? We'll put it there and there and there. You know, a little Big Dipper constellation. It's not the best, but you know, cut me some slack. There we go. Um, ones that you think might be a little bit too big. Why don't we take it and grab it with our Filbert brush, try to stay out of your way and just pull it off like that. This cool little thing. The more and more you do it, the longer you can make it. Stretch it, right? Really stretch it to how you want it to look. And remember, your sky does not have to be filled with stars. I have to tell myself that all the time. It does not have to be fully filled. So don't put too many, right? Don't waste your time on too many. All right, let's see. Now take our old brush here and swipe up in the direction that we kind of did with our things, just making it a little bit blurrier. 
right? So the more that you come in, the dangerous, more dangerous it becomes, right? Kind of swiping it up, making it a little bit blurry. And it's okay that we're depositing these little brush taps, right? As we go down, they get brighter. The more and more we pick up, because we're gonna wanna bring some of that color down. And we're really gonna pull it down. Coming up, just like that. Pulling it down in the direction that we were going. All right, maybe on this side we come up a little higher. Drag some of that color down. All we're really trying to do is just brighten it up just enough to where when we pop something dark against it, it's gonna stand out. Now we're gonna take that and just mix it up. Get your frustrations out. That's the part, part of the day where you're like, oh, get my frustrations out. There we go. Yeah, a little bit softer going up the side. See, that's just a little bit more blurry, a little bit more blurry. I like that little dark patch, but there we go. Just like that, nice little dark. What's happening back there is what I wanna know. All right, we're gonna take another fan brush. We're gonna come back into that dark color. Just like that, get a fair amount of it on the brush. We need it. Gonna have to make a whole big section of forest. Not too big though. Now we're gonna come over here and let's pop it up into the, into all that fog, look at that. That's why we add that little bit of color. So there's this smallest little bit that stands out behind these trees. Now right, we're gonna to wanna to cover in the majority underneath. But not going down too far. You don't need to go down too far on this one. That's what's fun about these two. They like to grow. They like to grow on you. All right, we're gonna take those. Take that dark color on our brush. I'm just gonna pull them out almost straight sideways, right? Just about. A little bit higher over here. Back, 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 back. A little bit lower here, higher up here, right? And then this shadow part just doesn't matter. <clears throat> now let's take a little bit of that white color, a little bit of that blue color, just on the end of the brush. And we're gonna come in and just make these, this is like our line, our horizon line, right? We're gonna make it come down, not straight down, okay? Be straighter in some sections. Then some sections is a little bit more. Maybe this side over here comes in a little bit straighter and brighter to kind of meet up with them. Just like that, that's all we need. All we really need. A couple little bits of snowy white. Again, we don't want it to be super bright white, but I do want this one to be whiter than the other ones. This one's more in the light. All right, we'll come back here. A little bit of that more, of that blue color. Just to change it up. Remember, keep those angles and then we'll come over here. Right, maybe this guy comes, but we're leaving that little dark area. Maybe this guy starts to grow down. Doesn't really much matter. There we go. A little bit of light color is all we're looking for. And then over here, we're just rotating down until we get that right look that we're looking for. <clears throat> Now we're gonna grab that dark, dirty brush again, but it seems like we need to make up some more paint. So let's come back, grab a little bit more, because we can always add more, make more piles. We can hit pause, we can go back, we can rewind. We can do all that stuff. Your piles don't have to be as big as my piles. Your painting doesn't have to look like my painting by the time we get done, right? It's just an idea for you, just an idea. Now, we're gonna come back, we're gonna grab some of that dark color up, and over here. And we're gonna come in, maybe there's a couple bigger trees that live over here. Just kind of popping it in like that, trying to stay out of your way. Back and forth, back and forth. And then we rotate and rotate. And you start getting all these little bristles that pop out. Cool little things, all this texture, this big, thick, nasty of the tree that's just aching for some, some highlight to it. And we'll go off a little bit further, make a little smaller guy. Just popping up, popping up, popping up, and then poof, a little, little tree. What do we do? Let's do a couple more. Put one guy over here, right through the, almost the peak of the mountain, Josh. What are you thinking? Right through the peak. 
littlest touches up top because we don't need a whole lot, right? It doesn't need to stand through. We need to show through all of that. And again, a lot of thick, nasty paint on our brush that's, gra that's ready to just grab a bunch of highlight stuff, right? Got to have these little fingers hanging out. If you run into an issue where you're going across all that thick paint from your mountain, dip it into your paint thinner a little bit, just thin it out, and you'll be good to go. Good to go. <clears throat> all right, we're going to take that dark color brush, the darker brush, and pull that out over here. Just kind of casting some shadows into that snow, and then we can always go back and highlight over it. And a whole nother little bit of shadowing. Look at all those little pieces of light coming through. And that is really cool. Really, really sort of cool. Now, if we can take that with our two inch brush, just make it soft. We can always go back in and cover over with the, with the white, but that looks really neat. Wow. Wow, that looks cool. All right, let's take up a little bit of our white over here, mix it up with a little bit of that blue again. Now we're gonna come in, get our sort of lighter colored brush. You know what we should do first? Let's do a couple little bushes at the bottom of these guys. All right, just kind of softening it. And we'll go in, we can use the fan brush. That's all it is, is just making a textured mess about what's underneath here. Maybe a couple pop out over the side, get a couple little bits of grassy texture to grow up right here. Some kind of something to give us a break against that bit of uh, light color back there. It's just a little disconnect, brings these guys closer. Now we're gonna come in with our, our uh, fan brush right here, a little bit into the, the liquid white mixture that we made. And come back up, kind of touch the edges. If it doesn't stick, then we need to go back in and get some more liquid white. Come back in. The liquid white's gonna help it stick to that thick paint. So it should come off in different areas where we have our little tree trunk. Right, and then we can go back over it and uh, try not to cover it all is the key, right? That is the key. Don't cover all of it, Josh. Can't do that. For some reason, my forest looks very thin back here. Like I didn't cover up the bottom well enough. So we'll come back in at the bottom. There we go. That's much better. Pull some of these guys out just to throw in a little bit of shadowing, even a little deeper, darker shadow in there in the middle. That looks cool. All right, now let's go back to that brush where we started grabbing up our paint. Don't want to get too much into that liquid white pile. Otherwise it's going to be really wet and nasty. All right, this guy, I'm gonna pull him out. Just make him brighter than the rest, right? Just bring the brightness back. We can do whatever we wanna do with these, with these little things. It's really amazing what we can do. All right, now let's throw in a little bit of, well, that looks cool too, almost like this is a wraparound. That looks really neat, guys. Let's see what we can make this guy look like. Just by little taps, little things growing, little things happening. And once it stops grabbing, then stop. But that looks like a little path back there now. That is really cool. If we can make it like wrap around. And maybe only we'll see it, but now this at least looks like it's like a little hill almost kind of growing up around the whole thing. Looks kind of neat. And we just did it on, on accident. I'm like, Josh, how'd you do that? Well, it was an accident. Sorry, <laughs> didn't mean it. All right, let's come up here. A couple little taps with our one inch brush, not two, or not one inch brush, our little uh, micro liner brush. I right? don't want to go too crazy with all the the white highlights, especially around the snowy bit back here, because it'll, it'll all blend in. It won't look, you know, different. It'll just look too much of the same. That's a very thick tree right there. Now we'll come back, come over to this guy. 
couple little things here, there, there, here. A little bit of tree hanging out. We're gonna put our bits of bush in the back. Again, not covering everything, just the whole bottom of that thing. Be a whole different bush. Like, what is Josh doing? He doesn't even know what he's doing anymore. Come back in, little taps. You're probably right. I'm just trying to think of things for you guys to paint, that's all. All right, a couple little taps on the way down. And then we'll leave that disconnect of dark color. Put in a little bit of bush. All right, a couple little bright areas, little dark areas. Let me go back, get some more paint, brighten it up. Little things happening back there. That looks really cool. All right, put a little bit of that underneath. So when we pull it out, we'll get this little different change. It all depends on how we move our brush, right? That's all really it. How are we gonna move the brush? All right. Man, that looks really cool. That looks really cool. What else could we do is the question. That is always the question. And you guys are like, how do you come up with these scenes? I'm like, I, I literally do it right in front of you. I don't, I don't know how I come up with them, but I do. And I do it right in front of you guys and just show you what my ideas, like how I would come up with my own ideas. It's really quite amazing, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, that's a joke. That's a joke, guys. We could do like a road. People have been giving me crap about my last road. We could totally knock out a path or something in there. We could do a house right here. A path. Get the roadway that goes up and around into the mountains, or we could do something else. All depends on our angle of our brush, right? That is really neat. Those shadows right there they look really cool. I love that little bit of mistiness back there at the base of the mountain, right? Gotta have that. Now, what are we gonna do? Just bring this down and we're working it in. Just so I can have it in my mind what the rest is gonna look like. If we continue on this way, what is the rest of the painting gonna look like? And then I can always go back over and add more paint and change it and do all sorts of stuff, right? Because that's, that's the fun part of painting. That is the fun part. There we go. I'm just trying to make it, I don't know what I'm trying to do actually. Bring down some of that color, apparently. <clears throat> well, it's like a whole big snow drift up there. We need to actually add some more. Well, if we add our cabin right here, it's not really gonna make much difference. So why don't we try thinking about that, putting our cabin down, and then uh, maybe we'll have some water right here. We have like some reflective water. Showing all those bits, right? All these cool little things that I gotta wanna keep some of the darkness. Don't wanna have it grow too far down. Keep that disconnect of color. Swipe over these guys right here. Just like that. We can always go back and make it brighter, but at least that's the idea that we're working with now. And we can decide where we want stuff to be. Like for me, maybe there's a bigger bit of tree that lives down here, right? So we'll come up, come straight down, right onto the, the shoreline down here. Now, because it's taller than these trees and it sits lower, that brings it closer to us. And that's what we want. Let me try to scoop up all this paint right here. It's all spread out. Right, trying to stay nice and thin until we can get past all that thick stuff in our mountains. And then we'll come down and make our big old giant tree right here that lives on the edge of the water. Just like that. Remember to leave something underneath him, otherwise it's not gonna make any sense to anybody. Really leave those little fingers just waiting to reach out and grab something. All right, and then we can go give them what they want and give them some highlights. Cool little thing, right on. Now before we get, before we forget, let's take and we'll kind of create the, I mean, there's a little hill that lives right in there. It starts to lead up this way and start to play with our, you know, 
with our stuff. Play with what everything's gonna look like. It's gonna look really cool. For some reason, I love this little bit of shadowing in there. It's really neat. If we could get like a little bit more of that shadowing to come down so it's not so bright and then everyone's gonna look right here. And be like, why is that so bright right there? I don't get it. It'll be our little secret though, guys. Okay, we're gonna go back into that blue and white just so we can kind of give ourselves an idea of what our shoreline's gonna look like over here as it blends in. Now look, cool. remember, don't do too much back here. Gotta leave it dark back there behind that tree. I have some shadowy area, right? Now we got that. And we can, why don't we just pull in? We could do a whole nother bit of land that comes in over here. All depends on the angle of our brush, right? Comes down, it could even come out into the water if we wanted to, or extend this. We could drop the water down. We could do all sorts of things until it looks right, right? So, let me come down like that. Just keep working it. We can always go back in and add our shadow back in. That looks good. We'll have a nice little flat little bit of water that we can play with. The more and more you go over those lines and dark areas, the more they'll go away, of course. There we go. Trying to work in some more of that light back in here, just blending it all just by going over it and going over it and going over it just allows it to all blend together. We could throw a little fishing shack right here. I think we should. I think we should. It's starting to look so good. Why not? We got the brown out. Speaking of which, we need to make up some trunk color. A little bit more white, just to have it stand out. It's gotta have it be marbled against all of this guy. And then once he gets high lit up, look at that, it's not even straight. There we go. Once he gets high lit with white and stuff, we won't be able to even tell the difference. All right, let's mix up a little bit more of that black, crimson and blue, right into the same old pile. That's why we keep them all together on the palette. That's why we mix them up. We use them as the shadow, it's very easy. And once it's at this dark state, you can always lighten it and make 15 mountains coming towards us, right? You could if you wanted to. All right, let's take a little bit of black. We're gonna come up here and decide what our little cabin's gonna look like. And pull it down, pull it down just like that. Let's go maybe another half length on that side so it's not too small. <clears throat> And we'll go another full length on this side. That way we can pull them out. And again, you just push it down, giving ourselves all we're worried about is the outside edges right now. All right, now we're gonna come in again, go off to the side and off the side. Glad I caught that camera malfunction before we went too far, right? Literally, I heard it, I was like, oh, jeez. All right, now we're gonna actually take that, we're gonna scrape it up. Scrape up where our roof is gonna be. So come straight across. And in this one, we planned it out just right to where we didn't really have to scrape up much, right? Now we're gonna take the smallest bit of black and we're gonna come in and just lay down that dark, just so we have a little bit of shadow underneath our, our uh, bit of snow. Always hard on the edge of the canvas to get it filled in, right? Yeah. Now we got our own little bit of our cabin out here. Now we're gonna take up, let's get a little bit of our white snow. Come over here, just very lightly, pull it down the side of the cabin, just like that. Gotta make those noises or it doesn't work. Just like that, cool little things start to happen. And the more and more that we go over it and mix it, the more cool little bits happen. Now let's do this. Just like that, get this cool little thing. All those little breaks and different things in there, they're really neat. You don't wanna lose all those. But you do wanna keep that disconnect of color between the white and the top of the roof. Now, we could do it in brown, but eh, let's do it, let's do it in brown. Let's get a little bit of dark, come over here, mix with that brown color, because we don't want it to be so super bright brown, right? It can't be bright brown in the middle of the night. Take the smallest little bit of white. Just brighten it up in certain areas and then we'll come in matching our lines and we'll just pull right down. Just like that. These cool little things. Try to keep that little line of dark around the outside, right? We don't need all the 
the things there. Now we're gonna rotate the knife, pull straight down again. Come over here, line it up, pull it down, nice and easy. You can go down off the side, doesn't matter. Down in here, give it a little bit of color to pull out into the snow, right? Now, let me just take a little bit of that dark, a little bit of that brown, and we'll throw them onto this side. Just kind of mix it up, and just like that. Now we got a darker side and a lighter side to our cabin. I mean, come in and really accentuate where that light side is. Just like so. Always line up your knife and then pull down with your with your angles like that. Gotta line it up. There, now we have a light side and a dark side to our cabin. Come in, we're gonna scrape out a door. Let's put it, shoot, we can put it over here to the side. Scrape it out, scrape it out. I don't wanna do the full knife section for this one, not for my big old knife anyway. Take a little this bit of white, come around the edge, line it right there, line it down the side. Doesn't have to be super bright, small bit, small edge of the knife. Right for the top, we got our old saggy little building just hanging out in the middle of winter, freezing to death. Poor old guy. I don't want it to be too bright in there. It almost looks like for some reason that there's a window right here, or at least there should be a window right here. So we're gonna scrape out a little area for the window. Come in, we can add a little dark. So we don't want any of that lighter color to kind of show through back there. And bam, bam, just gives it a little bit of depth if it's nice and dark back there. Come up, gotta fix our, gotta have a straight ledge. Come on, even though it's an old saggy building, gotta have a straight ledge, Josh. Now we we'll come across, a little bit of white on that ledge, gives it a cool little look. Don't worry, we didn't forget the white over here. Gonna pop it off the side a little bit. Just like that. Got our own little bit of our cabin. And that looks really, really neat, guys. I really like this one. <clears throat> Let's take a little bit of that white and bluish color on the brush. That's our little, our snow color. Right, just line these guys up. Gotta pull higher from here, right? It's gotta come down and then back up. This side, a little easier because we're at the very corner of the canvas. But you can't pull it all down from the same way. Right, you gotta have a little bit of a dip, a little bit of a V in there. Gotta have the V, right, just like that. Poof, got our own little cabin, way off, middle of nowhere. And why not? This guy's got a little chimney on him. It's gonna be hard to put somewhere. We can put him back here, try to cover over a bit of that white back there. That perfect, amazing bit of chimney like that. All right, let's come in, we're gonna grab up some of our our liquid white into that highlight color over here. Just making it nice and wet. And come make the, the point of our tree very white like that and then just very lightly come in at different ways, different angles, pushing differently, a little bit harder sometimes, a little bit softer, leaving some areas of light and dark and shadow. I right? don't wanna to come too far away from the edge over there. Anywhere there's a, a kind of a dark side spitting out, Throw a little bit of your lighter color on there. Right? Again, let it just kind of fade away into the dark back here. Don't need it to be a whole lot of dark uh, or a whole lot of light down around the bottom. Really doesn't need to be. Now we can even take that, kind of dab it up a little bit. We'll throw a little, uh, another little bush right in the front right there. And the only reason I'm dabbing it like that is to make that textured bit of paint soft enough for me to throw some more textured bit of paint on it. Right, so we can come in here, really just load in this big nasty bit of bush right there, right? Big something, big gross nasty piece of foliage, right? And then we can come in, take the bottom because we can't have it just floating out there. Never works if it's just floating. Come back in, a little bit of liquid white into that whitish color, and then we'll just highlight a couple little bits of it. Little different things. Don't have to have the whole thing covered. Doesn't all have to look the same. Don't want to cover up all those dark areas. Got to have those cool little bits in there. Got to have them. Just like that. Cool little thing. 
Now we're gonna switch back to that lighter colored brush. Grab some of that light and blue. Take a little bit of our snow color. Pull it down to meet this other bit right here. Looks very, very neat. Man, really cool guys. Really, really cool. I can't wait to see someone's version of this. The first version, okay? Now again, we're gonna take these, gonna pull it straight down, some of that lighter color. Bam, 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 bam. Just like that. All right, it's lighter in some areas, darker in some areas. Take our big old two inch brush, making it nice and soft. Swipe it back and forth over to the side. We got a couple bits of reflections back there. Nice little bit of reflective water. Looks fantastic. Take a little bit of our dark on our liner, on the edge of our knife over here and just dump in a little bit of a, a little bit of a shoreline, a little disconnect in the color. Look at that. It's all it's really doing is just breaking up what the the shore looks like. Breaking up that color between the light and the dark. And we get some of these little bits that grow down. They really end up looking cool. You don't know what that was. Just like that. Look at that. Even that little dark area where we had to kind of correct it still looks amazing. A little light sheen. Maybe that's from the moon. Maybe you throw a little of this bit in there too. Shape it how you want to shape it. Man, just like that, guys. Very cool. What should we do? We can throw a couple little, little grassy bits that live down around the bottom of the shoreline down here. Take our little bit of white. Again, we don't want to lose that disconnect of our colors, right? Don't want to lose that disconnect, but we do like having those little differences. Those cool little things, little differences in color. Now let's come in, our crimson and black and blue mixture, just right on the brush this time because the painting's almost over, except Josh is about to go crazy nuts and who knows what's gonna happen. So why don't we come in like this and we'll just go, Bam, whole bit of a crazy tree in there. See how we get darker down around the bottom, a little bit thicker, a little bit lighter. We can even go off the edge if we really wanted to get nuts crazy. We could just have it keep going on forever. Now let's do another one that comes past this guy. Crazy, crazy old Josh. What has he done now? What have you done? All the people are asking, what have you done, Josh? Why would you do such a thing? Got to put some big stuff in the foreground, guys. Got to. All right, what if we threw a nice old branch over off this way? And maybe he went over there. You got to sing to it. You sing to it if you want it to play your game. Maybe one off to the side. You gotta be careful when you go over this big old thick mountain stuff. Don't wanna have your branches too, you know, if they're too dry, they won't really move. This guy's gonna have to be much thicker now. That's okay. We love going over stuff in the background. Can't have it all just be the same. Gotta hide things, gotta hide things. Throw a big old branch over there. Another one off to over here. Different things happening. Another big old branch off of that guy. You just keep letting your tree grow, right? That's what, that's what Josh does. He lets his tree grow like crazy. Yeah, we're gonna take it all the way off the top of the canvas for this guy. A couple little branches, little sticks and twigs here and there, there and here. Come back, get some more thinner for this guy. And maybe he's got some that come and cut in front. Or they're off that way, or whatever. Into the darkness, right? Looks really cool. Now, let's get just for a little bit more detail, our, our little tiny liner brush. And 
and we'll throw little cool little things off to these guys. Just little details that that bigger brush has trouble with. Cool little things like that. Little different things. And that's why we use that bigger one almost as a starter brush to kind of give us the idea about where we want to go with our smaller brush. There we go. Over there, over here. All sorts of places that we get all these little tree branches growing off of. But the more snow that you have in an area of your mountain, the harder it's going to be to stick those branches. So be careful. Now, when we come in, we'll take our a little bit of our highlight color snow and we'll just start dragging it across this tree like this. Dragging, he's dragging, dragging his stuff. There we go. Gotta have a lighter side and a darker side to our tree. So in this instance, we have chosen this to be the lighter side. So for that guy, it's got to be like that too. All we're doing is getting that little bit of color to let this little bit of darkness stand out. And that is going to look cool. Just have one side light, one side dark. That's all we're trying to do. Just like that. We forgot that whole big long branch up here. There we go. This guy's just gonna grow all the way just because he wanted to be so big. He's gonna grow up that tall all the way to the tip top. There we go. Cool little things. Cool little things. Maybe we could tap it in with a fan brush and a little bit of liquid white just to get a one side of our, our branch high lit. Let's see, we got a little bit of a branch over here. Sometimes they're too small for the for the you know knife to kind of work, so gotta get a little bit of help on it. You got that, got this guy down there, that guy over here, ba 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 bam. Over there, come back in. You can always go back and get more. Just to where it hides that littlest bit. We got that bit of snow on top of our little bit of branch. It's really cool. Really kind of neat, guys. Really kind of neat. Just making it bright with the, that liquid white. And we got a little bit on this guy. We almost forgot him. Like that. There we go. Cool little stuff. Now let's throw a little bit of that white down here. Grab up our brush, just kind of pull it out very slightly. It'll blend in with the stuff that we have. And whatever's left can be like a little bit of snowy grass or something right on the edge. Look at this. Look at this pond, guys. And this dude's almost missing like a like a little pathway down. Definitely. Definitely needs a path. So we'll take that. Just kind of push it off there. A little bit over there. All depends on how we move our brush, right? Depends on whether or not this guy gets a path or not. Pulling it back to the side that way. Bingo, bango. Now we'll come back in here, pop in a little bit of snow around where we want our guy's little path to be. Just to brighten it up in this area. That's all we're really doing. Just brightening it. Now we'll come back in with that little bit of thicker white paint. But we don't want to cover up all the what, guys? All the shadows, right? Don't want to cover up the shadows. Definitely not. Gotta leave something. There we go. 
Yeah, I like that. That's cool. We can even do little stairs and stuff. There's all sorts of little things you can do. Right? Little stairs lead up to his house. Some kind of something. You know, almost make him grow with the knife itself because the brush will make him grow too tall and too long. There we go. I love doing these little cool little things that you can do pretty easily if you've given, you know, been given the idea or seen it a couple times. And they're pretty easy little things to do. A couple little logs that are really covered. Big old nasty bush in front of his house over here. It takes up the whole side. You can just start adding cool little things to make yours different than mine, right? That's the goal. It would be just slightly different than what mine looks like. And see, see what happens when it looks different. Just like that, cool little bit of bush. Cool little bit of bush. You gotta make those like wintry noises, right? The wind is whipping, it's freezing outside. At least it is in my mind. It's freezing outside. Here in Vegas, it's like already in the 80s, upper 90s. It's going to get very, very warm here very soon, and we're not excited about it. You can even take your knife and add a little bit of texture if you wanted to, really. Who's stopping us from adding a little bit of texture here in the foreground, right? You don't want to have your whole painting be like this, but here in the foreground, Looks kind of cool. A little bit of snowy textury bit. And really start to shape how your hills look and how your stuff lays. And then you get these cool little textured areas all the way down to the water's edge. Looks really nice. Maybe there's just a little bit of light like peeking through right there. And then we'll really have it bright over on the side. Coming down, but we're not covering everything, right? Can't cover it all. A little bit of light around the edge of the tree. It's really neat. Really kind of cool. I don't want to go too bright over here just because of the, the tree that we have there. I mean, the moon might be shining down, hitting. So I guess it looks right enough. A little bit of texture, a little bit of fun. And just like that, we got a cool little completed painting, guys. Now, you don't have to add water lines to this, you could. You could come back in and add like a little touch of, of light around the edge, right? It's not a necessity and you don't want it all in the same place. A little bit of stuff, a little bit of something happening. Right, what I do want though, is maybe we can get a little bit of that extra line, extra little bit of reflection. Watch this. If we can take this guy and just grab him down at the right area. All right, just the right area, the right amount of touch. You get that cool little bit of reflection down there. Looks really neat. Looks so neat that why didn't we do it over here, Josh? All right, don't want to make it too bright. But you got to have a cool little bit. Maybe it's a little, I mean, the more and more you do it, the more it looks like a frozen pond. It looks really neat. It's really neat, but we don't want to make it too bright, right? Don't want to make it too bright. In some areas I want to be a little bit brighter than others, just like that. Man, if that's not a cool painting, you guys. And I don't know what is. Just trying to brighten up this area. Be part of our little snowy high lit tree, right? Very cool looking. There we go. Cool little things, guys. Just like that. Man, just don't want to stop. This looks too good. 
Just looks too good to stop. There we go. Gotta stop down around the bottom, right? Can't just connect it in with our snow. There we go. Man, I'm doing... Just throwing in a little bit of that dark just to separate our light, right? Just so we have a little bit of extra deep dark shadow in there. And then we're gonna be done, I swear is it to you. Man, that looks neat. All right guys, well, you know I love you and uh, this is the time when we say goodbye. So let's get our little fam. And we'll see where we're going to be today. Where would we be today? If we could get a nice small brush, that would be good. There we go. There we go. Just like that guy's flying through. Looks really neat. Man, this one looks fantastic. Don't know what that is over there. Let's wipe that off. <laughs> All right, where are we gonna sign this sucker? It is the question. Well, let's do it over here. There we go. Just like so, guys. Almost dipped the brush into my cup. All right, well, I've got a mountain of brushes to go clean up, and so do you, probably. You gotta finish up here real quick, so uh, you can listen to the links, right? We have uh, our Facebook page, facebook.com slash paintwithjosh, youtube.com slash paintwithjosh, twitter.com slash paintwithjosh, tiktok.com slash paintwithjoshk, instagram.com slash paintwithjoshk, twitch.tv slash paintwithjosh there's so many sites paintwithjosh.com of course go to paintwithjosh.com check that out well, there's so many sites and London's like we need more sites and I'm like oh my god I can't do any more sites I think we're on Cameo too I, I don't know are we on Cameo? what's that? <laughs> but uh, yeah so I uh, can't wait to see your guys' version of this painting uh, please send them into facebook.com slash paintwithjosh and uh, we always me and London just it's, it lights our day up when you guys send in photos so keep sending them in and uh, try this one. It's a lot of fun. And uh, I'd love to see your version. So can't wait. We'll talk to you guys later. And uh, until the next time we see you, either on Sunday or Wednesday or five seconds from now when the video, the, the, the next video starts. Uh, you guys take care. Have a great day. And we'll see you. Bow. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a... S Hi, guys. How you doing? So dumb. All right, whoosh, it almost fell. In the intro, let's hop right to the painting. We're gonna get to it, we're gonna do it just like this. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch black canvas with just a few colors, just a handful, right? Turned out fantastic. Giant mountains, huge moon, big old foreground tree, nice kind of frozen, soft little water kind of wrapping against the 